Hello everyone, so today we're going to check out another new framework that's based on the WAN 2.1 models, making purpose-built AI models for relighting video, UniLumos. Now the purpose of relighting videos is this, say you have a video source of the foreground, like a character or an object right in front, and you want to swap in a different background, these AI models can handle that kind of task because once you swap the backgrounds, the lighting on the foreground objects or characters comes from a different environment. So, by sampling with these AI models, the lighting effect gets regenerated for the foreground objects or characters to blend into the new background's environment. That's why a lot of demos for this AI model use different backgrounds. Swapping backgrounds is the main way they show how the model relights both the background and the character so it blends into the environment. Now we're going to check this out on Hugging Face. Uni Lumos from a research team in Damo Academy, Damo Yuan. It's one of the AI research branches from Alibaba, kind of like where they turn ideas into prototypes and work on all kinds of AI research, from conceptual stuff to proof of concept projects. You'll see a lot of interesting projects happening on their Hugging Face page too, so we're going to look at this AI model called UniLumos. UniLumos is based on the WAN 2.1 1.3 billion parameter model, fine-tuned specifically for this purpose-built relighting task. Whether you're working with AI-generated videos or real footage, it relights objects along with the background. Basically, if you check the Files and Versions tab, you'll see a T5 model for the text encoder and the VAE from WAN 2.1, as well as the main model called UniLumos PT. With this PT model, you can load it into Comfy UI, or alternatively, you can use SafeTensor's files. There's a repo on Hugging Face from KJ called WAN Videos Comfy, where they've repackaged this model into SafeTensor files for easier model loading in Comfy UI, so you can try it out more easily locally. If you're already a WAN 2.1 or WAN 2.2 user, you probably already have the text encoder and VAE, so you don't need to download those files again. You can just go straight to downloading this 2.8 gigabyte AI model file to get started. Now, once again, this AI model is purpose-built just for relighting objects so they blend into the environment, meaning the background. So don't expect it to do other fancy stuff, like regular AI video models that handle text-to-video or image-to-video tasks. And no, this isn't for general use. We're going to base our workflow on the example from the WAN video wrapper to get started with relighting characters onto a background. As you can see, most of the user side input involves the foreground and background videos, both get imported here as video files. For the foreground, we use a remove background step using the essentials node here to make whatever character or object have a transparent background. That remove backgrounds task gives us mask data, which then passes into an invert mask. That means we're not masking the foreground objects, like the character or a car in the video. Instead, we're inverting the mask to target the background. So, we end up with a white colored background. After that process, we resize it and draw the mask with a dedicated color, gray in this case, to fill in those masked regions. Finally, we pass it to the WAN video encoder to do its thing. The new custom node for this AI model is the WAN Video UniLumos Embed. As you can see, the latent data, the pink dot here, comes from the foreground latent output of the WAN Video Encode, and the other input, the background latent, comes from a separate WAN Video Encode node that's fed by the background video. Before we pass the background video into the encoder, we also process it. We resize both the foreground and background videos to match the same dimensions. Then, we have to draw Gaussian noise on the image. There's a new node in this update of the WAN video wrapper called Draw Gaussian Noise on Image. So before you start playing around with this AI model, make sure you've got the latest version of the WAN video wrapper. Using git pull is the most straightforward way to get the latest update. If you use Comfy UI Manager, it might not always give you the newest version of the WAN video wrapper. So what this node does is, once it receives the image from the background video, it draws the mask on top of it. Once that's done, you'll see a gray colored region with noise covering the masked area, where the foreground object, like a car or character, will be moving around. That specific region gets covered using this node. 
Then, we pass all this latent data into the encoder and embed it into the WAN video sampler. I know it's kind of different from text to video or image to video, but basically, when you zoom out, the overall concept is the same as most AI video workflows you're used to. You take your inputs, convert them to latent data, embed them, and feed them into the WAN video sampler. Of course, you also need to load the model. We're using the one we just mentioned, so make sure you download it. Download it into your ComfyUI slash models slash diffusion folder. The VAE and text encoder stay the same as usual. You can use either WAN 2.1 or WAN 2.214B. There's no difference there. As for the LoRa models, the default setting in the WAN video wrapper examples uses the WAN 2.1 COSVID bidirect 1.3 billion parameter model. That's this COSV LoRa model dedicated for the WAN 2.1 1.3B model type. After playing around with it for a while, I reorganized the whole workflow like this, and I also added another AI model from WAN 2.1, Mocha. We've talked about Mocha in previous videos. It's similar to WAN 2.2 Animate, where you swap a character in a video with another character using just one mask image from a reference video, and it can handle the whole video. So I'm using it here as a second pass on top of what we're testing with this new model today. Let's try it out right now. I've got an input video as the foreground. The demo I usually use for close-up shots or character fidelity testing of a lady sitting on the beach. As you can see, this reference video was shot at sunset, so the character's skin tone has a yellowish tint, and there's that sunset atmosphere overall. We're testing it with a length of 81 frames, so I've synced both the foreground and background inputs to 81 frames. For the background, I'm using another video that has a pretty matching environment. The mood and atmosphere look close to the reference video I just showed, so we're swapping the background from the beach to a riverside setting. There's a man in the background video, but the woman should stay as the foreground. After we generate the new video, let's see how it looks. Once it starts, it loads the foreground and background and processes the mask first. One more thing to mention, leave the WAN video text encoder empty. It really doesn't matter what text prompts you put in here, especially in this group, because you're swapping in actual background footage and the mask regions are already handling the video sampling. So whatever you type in the text prompt for this, AI model won't affect the output. Here's the generated video. You can see that after we ran the process we just described, adding the mask regions of the foreground character to the background video, plus those noise layers, you end up with the result we see here. It blends pretty well into the environment, and even the character's skin tone shifts to match. As you can see, it's identically the same character, but some details, like the surface of the shoulders and chest, change. You can tell the lighting shifted from sunset to overcast, which looks different. But one drawback of this AI model is that clothing sometimes looks off, like right here on the top, it turned yellowish instead of staying the white color from the original video. So it's not always accurate in that way, and that's just how it is. On the bright side, the background stays exactly the same. It doesn't change from the reference video. So we can still use this AI model to optimize what we want to achieve, especially when collaborating with other AI models. Because as I mentioned, this model's whole purpose is video and image relighting. So for other things like enhancing video details or doing additional refinement tasks, this AI model isn't meant for that. So what we've got here is the generated base image or base video, and this acts as the first pass of sampling. We can then use another model I've connected here, the one I just mentioned, Mocha. We pass normal mask regions that stack on top of the background here. Mocha is really lightweight for swapping character masking regions and handling full character swap tasks. It only needs one image. As you can see here, I'm just grabbing one image from the image batch, along with the mask from the same batch. Putting those together gives us this, and that's exactly what Mocha needs as input to identify the regions for swapping the character. Once that task is done, we move on to Quen 3VL, which I use for generating prompts. The prompts come from our generated video, specifically from the output after Juan video decodes the Unilumos result, which we're displaying here, but it's not finished yet. So, we pass those video frames to Quen 3 vl for video analysis, which automatically generates text prompts for this video and feeds them into Mocha's text encoder. 
For Mocha, we're using this model. I've talked about it in previous videos. You can check those out for more detail. We're also using a Light X2 V LoRa, specifically the text to video 14B Light X2 V LoRa model, just to speed up the sampling steps. We do block swaps the typical way we use with WAN 2.1, and up here, this is a little trick I've done, which I also mentioned in a previous video. Using one image as a reference input, we use Quan Image Edit to generate a close up shot of the character. Once we have that close up, we resize it back to 480 pi resolution so it can serve as the reference image input for Mocha. Mocha is pretty good at handling character skin tone and lighting. And just to clarify one more time with the background video, this whole setup acts as a second pass. As you can see here, it's another round of sampling, serving as a second pass after we get the initial output from Unilumos. We're now working on that video to fix the character's clothing. As you can see, the clothing shows noticeably different colors, way too obvious here, and that's just not acceptable for what we need. So this second pass helps us not only relight the character's skin tone, but also refine the character's edges. You can really see it shine in the hair. It blends beautifully into the new background. But sometimes, both the clothing and even the hair can experience a slight color shift. That's why we use Mocha as the second sampler here, using that close-up shot as reference. We end up with a very clear view of the character's face and a solid reference image, taken directly from the original source video. Of course, you'll want to adjust when the character actually appears in your video. Sometimes it's not at the very start, so you might need to set it to frame 5, 10, or wherever the character becomes visible. It depends on your clip. Once you've got that frame, it gets processed, background removed, focusing only on the character, used as the reference for Mocha's embed node here. We feed in the mask, input video, and VAE, everything flows smoothly, and we run the second pass sampling. Here's the second pass video from Mocha. As you can see, the character's clothing is now corrected back to what it looked like in the original video but some facial textures do take on a slightly 3D rendered look. That's because Mocha at this stage is still a preview model. I imagine they'll optimize it further for higher fidelity, better human character rendering and more detail. But as of right now, in open source AI development this year, we only have this preview version of Mocha. That's why we're using it as one way to enhance the character after background swapping and relighting. Now, as I just mentioned, this is only one approach. There's another method, but it's heavier on system resources because it uses a lot more VRAM. That's WAN 2.2 Animate. Here, I'm using the WAN video wrapper for the full workflow. From my testing, WAN 2.2 Animate delivers slightly better character fidelity. Next, I'll run the exact same foreground and background videos through the WAN 2.2 Animate workflow so you can compare the difference directly. Throughout this process, I've rebuilt the entire workflow cleaned things up, smoothed out the connections, and integrated WAN 2.2 Animate to improve quality. Of course, this demands higher-end GPU specs to run. I've also trimmed down the spaghetti wiring and used Get Set nodes to make the diagram cleaner. After integrating WAN 2.2 Animate, I wanted to push for higher fidelity and better character detail, so I created this version of the workflow replacing WAN 2.1 plus Mocha with WAN 2.2 Animate. Let's see how it looks with this updated workflow. The front end remains the same. Unilumos handles the first pass and initial sampling. Then we bring in the second background video and process everything fully. I've also made some workflow optimizations for Unilumos paired with WAN 2.2 because I think this combo yields higher quality results. For now, I'm leaving the Unilumos plus Mocha workflow as is. I haven't cleaned up the messy wiring because Mocha is still in preview. I'm really hoping for an official V1 or V2 release so we can test it properly. But right now, WAN 2.2 Animate is, in my view, the more reliable method for character swapping in the current open source AI video landscape. I've set all the parameters here to the default, typical settings from the example workflow. We end up with the correct clothing, and since WAN Animate also includes a LoRa model called Relight, it provides an extra refinement after the character swap. You might have noticed artifacts when using the Unilumos so it can produce similar artifacts. WAN 2.2 Animate helps smooth those out, 
especially skin tone, and better matches the overall look. I think this result looks noticeably better than what we got with Wan 2.1 plus Mocha. Sure, Mocha restored the face and clothing, but you can still see minor skin artifacts, just tiny details like texture or shading, where Mocha, built on Wan 2.1, still lacks refinement. If we put them side by side, the difference becomes clear. This is from Mocha. After refinement, it restores clothing and face, but the character overall has that 3D rendered feel. You can even see it in the eyebrows. It just doesn't look fully natural. I'm not sure if you'd really want to use the Mocha preview model for production content. The developers themselves label it as a preview, so why risk using a preview model for finished work? It's great for testing and experimentation, but for production, I personally lean toward Wan 2.2 Animate. It simply looks better right now. Of course, every approach has trade-offs. Wan 2.2 Animate consumes a lot more VRAM. In this workflow, we're running four models together. Unilumos, Quen 3 VL for prompt generation, lightweight background removal models, and pose slash face models using YOLO, which don't use much VRAM, but once you add Wan 2.2 Animate, the GPU demand jumps significantly compared to using Mocha. So, there are pros and cons. If your system can't handle the load, you might need to stick with the lighter, lower-end character replacement method. That's the bottom line. Anyway, I'll see you guys in the next video. See ya.